grab it for? That same man that's going all these years. Let me tell you something, brother. When a man gets right with God, his heart changes. Everything changes about him. He ain't the same old person. Oh, brother, put them and said these words. He said, when I got saved, I had to learn how to talk all over again. At 30 some years old. I, I, and then he went on to clarify. He said, I, I didn't know nothing. He said, 75% of my language was curse words, and I had to learn to talk all over again. I believe when a man knows Jesus for himself, you don't have to ask nobody. You have a real, true relationship. Amen with Jesus Christ. Now, number three, you know what's happened in our world? People have gotten being saved and religion mixed up. Sister Clark, there was this Bible is full of religious people. But you know what they do? They cast people down and try to get Jesus to kill them. Those were religious people that brought a woman to Jesus, caught the very act of a dog. Instead of them taking her to the church and, and letting some of the ladies help get her dressed and, and clean herself up and, and, and get her back uh, our composure back and say, now we're going to go down here to the and we're going to pray with you. We're going to try to help you and then we're going to get you out of this mess that you're in. We're going to get you a place to live and try to help you get started in life. Instead of that, they took her just like she was, thrown her down at the feet of Jesus and said, Moses and all said, we stole this woman. What do you say? Jesus looked around, saw all the crowd. Then the Bible said he reached down and stooped down and he rolled on the ground, Brother Danny. And when he rolled on the ground, he raised up. He said, he that's without sin, you cast the first stone. The Bible said in a minute, what well, nobody there but Jesus and that woman. That's the only ones that was there. You know why? Sister Kay and her lives was filled with the things of this world. They had skeletons in there and they did not, they well, could not, amen, cast the first stone at that woman. What I'm trying to say is, is this, amen, today religion, amen, will tell you to do this. Today in this world that we live, there is religion all across the land and country that will say that I am an infidel. They'll say that I'm crazy. And that they'd kill me if they could. You know why? Because they worship a man-made God. They worship Islam. They worship a, a, a man called Muhammad. Let me tell you, Muhammad was a man just like me. Amen. He was flesh and bone. He wasn't a Messiah. He wasn't somebody to worship. Man has made religious gods in India. They worship over a million gods there in that dark country. And then let me tell you today, friend, there's only one true and living God that you and I can worship today, and His name is Jesus. And friend, if they don't worship they're worshiping a dead God. Religion has caused men more trouble, but salvation sets men free. Religion will cause you to want to fight with somebody over some little pitiful thing that, that, that you said, well, I'm religious. I've been here all my life. And my granddaddy laid the first foot rock of that church down yonder. I'll have you know I've been religious all my life. But have they ever known Jesus? Have they known Jesus as their Savior? Have they ever come to know Him in a real uh, pardon and a real forgiveness? You know, when a governor pardons a man and he says this man's life is made over, you know what the governor does? He wipes the slate clean. He said that if he's been a thief, I'm going to cleanse him of that sin that he's, or, or that, that crime that he's committed. Now, if that man goes back out and does it again, then he becomes the same thing over. But you know what that governor does? He commutes his sentence. He pardons that individual and he lets him walk out of that prison uh, for time served. And you know what Jesus does for you? When you come to him and you ask him for forgiveness, he commutes your sentence. And he says you no longer have to be bound by the powers of hell you're set free. You're delivered. Everything you've done has been forgiven. Man, I'll tell you what. If man had had their way about it, I'd have never got into this thing. Man has kept people out for years and years and years. And said, well, you're not good enough. You're not this. You're not that. And you can't do this. You can't do that. But you know what Jesus said? You that's without sin, you cast the first stone. To know it is to love him. To know him is to, to know the difference between religion and to know the difference between salvation. Salvation sets people free. Salvation will make a man that wanted to fight everybody and, and want to go out and get drunk and beat his wife and beat him to his kids. But a dose of salvation, you know what it'll do to him? I tell you what it'll do to change his life. You go home and say to his wife, I'm sorry for the way I treated you. I'm sorry for the things I've done to you. 
He'll pick his little babies up and he'll put them in his arms. And he'll say, I'm so sorry for being such a sorry daddy. But from here on out, I'm going to treat you better. I'm going to your ball game with you. Or I'm going to go to your uh, school project. And I'll be at the next PTA meeting with you, honey. I, I want you to know. I tell you what they'll do. They'll clean up look like somebody. they walk into that school or walk into that church. Hey, hey man, I'll, I'll tell you what tickles me to death. Is to see a daddy or a mama get saved. Go home and roll up that whole family. And the next Sunday, they come walking in the back door. Got a fresh haircut. Good, clean shave. Ain't that looking like a million dollars smiling like a chisha cat. Ain't that everything looking better in the home front. You know why? Because Jesus has been allowed to walk into that door and change things in that home. Make people look like somebody. Let me tell you something today, friend. Christ is the answer to this world. People just don't know who he is. Now you know what they're basing it on? The back of the base it on. I heard it. Or I heard about it. Now I don't mean this is no harm. But there's some religious organizations in America today. That, that if God were to die, they'd never change me. They ain't needed God for a long time. God hadn't been allowed there for a long time. You know why? Because they learned the formality of religion. They learned how to make people like they want them. And, and they have no rule. They have no, they live not by that Bible. I liked what Brother Dalton said the other night. I didn't like it, but I liked how he brought it out. It was in California. This is the uh, brother, I think it's his first name. Paul, Don, Tom, Brother Tom Dawson. Show you how good my memory is going. Brother Tom Dawson was here. He said he went into California, Brother Buddy. He said he went to this church and said the beautiful church. He said they couldn't find it for a while. Brother Russell called, said it was so big it took up a whole city block. He said finally they found a part of it, a section of it, and they pulled in. And he met the, met the song leader and the music minister and all of that. He said he took them back to their office and he said they were just talking. So, oh, we're so glad to have you here at this church. We're so glad y'all come to sing for us. But he said, just want to tell you one thing in advance. Don't be singing those songs about the blood. But the dog said, he looked at him and just, honey, said, now nah, it makes our people sick. He said, some of them just get so sick when they go to talk and preach and singing about the blood. They want to throw up. I sat back there and listened to him tell that. When I got home that night, got ready to go to bed, I always do it. I guess I think too much. I ponder on things, but we spend a lot of time. He said, if you do it, I'm thinking, don't you? But we all just sit down and I, sometimes I ask him, say, what do you think about it? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I laid down there and I thought, how could a music minister? That's supposed to be singing about Jesus, singing about the cross, singing about the kingdom of God. Tell a man, don't sing about the blood. It begins with the blood. The blood's what cleanses man from his sin. Not from literal. I mean, I can't take the blood and do it. But we all know what the Word of God says. That without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He takes the blood, Brother Roger. But Jesus went back and placed that blood at the mercy seat, Sister Clark. Amen. It was done when he cried on the cross. It's finished. It's over. You lost, devil. You lost. Oh, listen, the Bible says, if the world had known, those people in that day, if they had known that they was crucified, a man that was going to set the world free, they'd have been very, very slow about crucifying the precious darling Son of God. He, he, he was the prince of this world. Amen. He was the loving Savior. Do you really know him? I'm closing today. Do you really know him? Is he your all in all? Is he everything to you today? Have you allowed him to come into your life? Allowed him to touch you? Allowed him to help you? Allowed him to set you free? If not, you can. And if you have, if you'll come to him, he'll do just that. He'll do just that. He'll set you free. You know what? The Bible said when Jesus was born, they didn't even have room for him in the inn. There wasn't a place 